Hi everyone. So after a long time, I'm making a video, and the topic is very very important. So please listen it carefully. The journey of plastic pollution in the Ganges. Ganges, the holy river of India, is also getting polluted. Kis se pollute ho rhi hai wo? Human beings se, human being activities se. So what is happening is the Ganges River network forms the second largest plastic polluting catchment in the world. and is among 14 continental rivers into which a into which over a quarter of global waste is discarded so second largest plastic polluting catchment hai iska and and among 14 continental rivers into which over a quarter of global waste is discarded the ganges river a distance of over 2500 kilometers from snow capped himalayas through the vast alluvial plains of north india before it meets the brahmaputra river and joins the sea It fed by many tributaries flow through some of the most densely inhabited stretches of India and Bangladesh it is a vital source for over 655 million people religions have been born on the river banks with temples that still welcome pilgrims fr uh, from far and wide to worship its sacred waters like haridwar and banaras that we have in india for decades the river has carried more than just prayers downstream municipal garbage untreated sewage industrial chemical effluents agricultural runoffs religious offerings and ghost fishing gear have polluted the water with plastic as the most pervasive and persistent pollutant persistent pollutant because as we all know plastic is a non biodegradable pollutant which don't get degrade very fast like the plants degrades very fast plant material get degrades very fast because microorganisms are able to degrade that material but plastic a synthetic a chemical don't get degrade it takes many years to degrade into the soil so there are several kinds of plastic are used in day to day life that end up as a pollutant in a river channels first is ethylene vinyl alcohol offers the best barrier resistance to gases such as oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide hence it is used as a package food uh, drugs cosmetics other perishable products polyacetylene a conductive polymer has no commercial application but it is used as a doping agent in manufacturing electronics and thin films and uh, the research in thin films and electronics is a vast field that is going on polypropylene is very commonly used in packaging plastic sheets fiber fabric tapes ropes etc phenol isopropylate phosphate is mainly used in footwear and many uh, baby bottle nipples polyamide commonly known as uh, nylon is used as a natural fiber metal wires in clothing and industry pvc polyvinyl chloride is used in pipes wires cables medical devices automotive industry with major application in the cosmetics and pharmaceutical industry so the ganges is among the top contributors of land based plastic pollution in global oceans the river serves as a conduit for terrestrial waste ending up in a marine ecosystem so this is the illustrated look at the plastic pollution among the ganges river course and its impact on water quality biodiversity economy and human health so these are the major sources of pollution in the ganges industrial effluents effluents like uh, tanneries textiles chemical plants distilleries so the effluent from these industries like kanpur the major hub of tanning industry the effluents from these industries get dumped down get dumped into this river okay then municipal untreated sewage with high organic load drains is often piped into the rivers religious offerings the temple offerings are often immersed in plastic containers into the ganges during the festival season the immersion of idols add large amount of plastic and chemicals to the river anthropogenic activities the waste from slaughter houses and hospitals along the river also find its way into the rivers inland fisheries fisher folk often discard plastic bias baits of fishing net known as ghost gear that causes entanglement of the river and species so these are the major sources that cause pollution into the river ganga the major threats to biodiversity and human well being from plastic pollution in the upper ganges are industrial pollution religious pollution human activities and the fishing industrial pollution as i have said in the earlier slide 
that uh, in the previous slide that uh, from different different industries contributors of plastic pollution along the ganges industrial effluents with chemical po uh, pollutants may increase the nutrient load in river water resulting in poor oxygen levels eutrophication and algal blooms so when eutrophication poor oxygen levels occur, occur in the river water that means the river water is polluted it means the river water is having less oxygen that is less than 8 mg per liter of oxygen is present in the river water and when there is a less oxygen means less than 8 mg per liter of oxygen is present that the water is contaminated and if it is less than 4 mg per liter then it means the uh, river water is polluted okay so when this happened then uh, when this happened that the river water is polluted that means the biological oxygen demand of that river is increased okay and COD demand is also get increased because the DO level that is dissolved oxygen content is in, uh, decreased. Okay. So the religion, due to the religious significance, there are numerous pilgrimage sites along the Ganges and the major uh, contributor of plastic pollution also. Human activities, uh, along the Ganges, human activities like domestic washing, abrasion of tires, use of personal care products and the fragmentation of large plastic contribute significantly to microplastic contamination. Microplastic, a major research area. Contamination of microplastic. Microplastic contamination flow from rivers to oceans and are transferred across the trophic levels where they can have grim consequences for biodiversity and human life. When the pollution, when the pollutant get transferred from one trophic level to the next trophic level, that leads to the biomagnification. And biomagnification disturbs the food chain. And when the food chain get disturbed, the whole food web get disturbed. And when the food web get disturbed, the whole ecosystem get disturbed. Okay. Then fishing. The upper Ganges is globally important for biodiversity and hosts a number of endemic aquatic species, many of which are of conservation concern due to the pressure from dam construction, habitat degradation, pollution and fisheries by catch. To add to this plastic pollution from ghost gear, discarded, lost or abandoned fishing gear in aquatic systems and from urban centers possess a further threat to biodiversity and human being. So these are the different kind of host gears. The gears that we used to catch fishes and other aquatic organisms from the river water is also leading to the plastic pollution in the Ganges. In February 2021, the sampling was carried out in cities like uh, Chandipur, Kanoj, Rishikesh, Patna, and Rajbari, so huge amount of large amount of uh, ghost care was found. Then we have some riverine species affected by plastic pollution. So the Gangetic dolphin, the national aquatic animal of India is also get affected by this plastic pollution. And this Gangetic dolphin is only present in the river Ganga. And the, 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 the number of Gangetic dolphin is getting decreased because of the plastic pollution. Saltwater crocodile, migratory species are also get affected by this plastic pollution. In August 2021, uh, the, there was a one conference convention on migratory species and the United Nations Environment Program published a report as part of the Countermeasure 2 project which documented the threats faced by the terrestrial, freshwater and avian migratory species in habitats across Asia and Pacific. It concluded that plastic pollution has a disproportionate impact on migratory species as they cover larger geographical area and face greater exposure. As we all know that migratory species move from one place to another and uh, over the sea and when they get settled down or when they get, uh, uh, you know, when they get over a river body, then they uh, consume some, some of the microplastics also. So there is a greater exposure to these migratory species okay and they move from one place to another so now this is the stretch of the ganga river and the lower ganges the lower ganges zone starts at the administrative boundary of uttar pradesh and bihar from here the river flows eastwards past the faraka branch to meet the brahmaputra forming a massive delta of ever shifting mangrove covered islands before it empties into the bay of bengal 
ओके सो दिस इज फराक बराज एंड इसके बाद ये ईस्ट वर्ड फ्लो करती है टू वर्ड बे ऑफ बेंगाल द मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर्स टू रिवर एंड प्लास्टिक पोल्यूशन इन द लोअर गैंजेस आर ह्यूमन हैबिटेशन इंडस्ट्री एंड फिशिंग In 2018, the Central Pollution Control Board of India reported that 6.07 billion liters of waste water from city drains are discharged into the Ganges. 6.07 billion means 6.07 into 10 raised to power 9 liters of waste water from city drains are discharged into that river. This waste water carries untreated sewage, religious offerings, agricultural runoff. industrial effluents from chemical plants thermal power plants sugar mills paper mills distilleries pan tanneries so what happens is the hot water also get dumped uh, into uh, into this river from these industries and when the hot water get dumped into uh, into the river then the temperature of that river water also get increased when the temperature get increased the concentration of oxygen level get decreased because the solubility of gas at a higher temperature get decreased okay so oxygen level get decreased then the survival of the species that are present in the river water is also get decreased so that leads to the destruction of the aquatic animals bold unrealistic promises to clean up the river have been in stock in trade by local and national government bodies for a while yet few clean up programs have had desired sustain and long term effects the pollutants from human habitation and industry have consequences on the lower ganges and estuarine uh, fishing economy inland fisheries provide a key income and nutrition for people in the lower parts of the ganges so uh, inland fisheries income provide karti hai nutrition provide karti hai logo ko jo lower part of uh, ganges mein rehte hain like uh, kolkata okay and india and bangladesh are two of the world's major inland fisheries producers over 140 species of fish have been reported along the ganges with fresh water fish in the zones above faraka baraj so fresh water fish jo milti hain faraka baraj se pehle wale zone mein milti hai usme 140 species of fish report ki gayi hai ganga river mein and estuarine species in the lower part so and uh, after faraka baraj the estuarine species of fish is found in the lower part of ganges inland fisheries face threats from urban and industrial waste agricultural pesticides heavy metal contamination construction of the faraka baraj resulting in the dwindling stocks in turn over exploitation of fisher folk threatens the biodiversity along this stretch and their ghost gear has far reaching the consequences in aquatic aquatic ecosystem so this is the estimate which is done by one of the institute and they found is how much plastic travels from the ganges river to the bay of bengal what they found is total plastic is 3 lakh 17170 tons per year tons means 1000 kilograms 1 ton equals to 1000 kilograms so that means 3 lakh 17170 into 1000 kilograms per year of plastic entered into the ganges river the acroplastic is 6221.8 tons per year and microplastic is 1 to 3 billion particles per day 1 to 3 billion particles per day in 2020 december as part of the sea to source ganges expedition run and funded by the national geographic society a study used geotagged bottles to show how plastic travels across the ganges so a study was done to show how plastic travels across the ganges and they found is plastic can travel 2845 kilometers in 94 days so approximately 3000 kilometers in 3 months that's how far reaching the consequences of every single bottle or piece of plastic waste can be some proposed solutions include finding and adopting alternative to plastic and then addressing terrestrial sources and dumping grounds before tackling marine litter further research like that undertaken by counter measure project implemented by the united nation environment programs asia pacific chapter funded by the japan can help identify the key sources and pathways of microplastic to better design intervention measures so we have to find out the key sources and pathways of microplastic to better design intervention measures targeted informed interventions will be crucial 
in ensuring the health of humans, biodiversity and ecosystem. So this is it and I hope you will understand this topic and take some important steps towards the plastic pollution, towards the reduction of plastic pollution. So thanks for watching and please keep your environment clean and happy and do like, share and subscribe to my channel Power of Environment. Thank you so much.